Hey guys, this is John. I'm playing Grandmaster Crow Texan, who is a friend of mine, Davrin Kulyasevich. I played him also on video before. So, should be a fun game. I'm gonna play d4, and when he takes. Ooh, he doesn't take, he does this line. This line I don't know as much about, but I think I have a general idea of how to proceed. So, let's just do bishop h3. The idea is to play knight d2. And now, let's just go rook e1, seems sensible. Yeah, and maybe, um, maybe rook b1. Okay, he attacks my pawn on d5. Could push it, I could take. Neither of which look that great. I'll just go here. I'm a little worried he can, well, if he takes on d5, I might take back with uh, the bishop on c7. Okay, now his knight doesn't have a lot of squares. He can go to a6, though, if I push to d6. So I think for that reason, I'll just play this move. Queen d2, nice and simple. Maybe he'll lock it up with e5. It's certainly possible. e5, bishop g5, maybe. So if he takes here on d5 instead, I can play bishop take c7. And the idea is I might take on d5 with the queen. That's kind of what I'm thinking. There's no reason to believe that that should give me like a huge edge or anything. So here I'm just trying to misplace his bishop. Well, actually, he can't play bishop f6, can he? Okay, I was thinking he could do that. Uh, let's just go back, bishop e3. He'll probably play that, yep. Now what do we think, b4 maybe? Yeah, let's go b4. Just expanding. He might play f5 somewhere. Stick with the queen. So now one plan I have is a4, a5 to try to weaken his b6 pawn. Yeah. I want to go queen in. I want to get my queen into c6. So let's do that. That does block my a-pawn, but I'm just curious how he'll respond. We should do two, maybe. Just so that f4 isn't as big of a deal when it's played. I still want to get the queen into c6. I'm still thinking that's, that's a decent idea for me. Problem is this bishop is now more restricted. So I'm going to have some issues activating it. He wants a queen trade. It's not a bad idea in his shoes. Let's just go queen a3 and pressure this pawn. I'm not ready to acquiesce to a queen trade. I don't think my bishop has much to do here, so let's just bring it back. Maybe I can go bishop d3, c2 to a4. It takes a while, but I think I might have time to do that. So let's just do that. I don't know if he sees where I'm going with this bishop quite yet, but I am going here. That's what I want to do. He can't really oppose me by playing a6 and b5, because a6 I can play rook takes b6. So I think this is a strong maneuver. Deverin's a very good player. Um, I'd love to play him more often, because I remember when we were in school, he was always a guy who studied a lot of chess. And uh, when we went to, we both went to the University of Texas at Dallas. When we got there, I think I was uh, not so far away from him in rating. He was like... Uh, you know, right around 2400 international master, but by the time he left school, um, he was quite a bit higher rated. He's a GM. Okay, so here, if I take on a7, he takes on d5 is the issue, but that should be good for me all the same, I think. Let's just double check. Yeah, I mean, hmm, maybe not. What about just bishop takes, bishop b4? Is that any good? Bishop b4. Bishop b4, he can go. Okay, let's do that. Let's do bishop b4. Knight e8, he plays. Okay. Let's get this guy in. Now I'm going to go a4, a5. I just have quite a bit of play. Lots and lots of play.
Problem is my time. My time is not good. Otherwise, this position is real nice. It's going to be a time scramble. Don't want a queen trade. Time. No queen trade. Let's tuck our king away. This looks nasty for him. Maybe. Queen a5. My mouse is like not responding right now. Oh, I could have taken his queen. That would have been much better. Check. 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 Checkmate. Okay, I got him at the end. Well, that was a time scramble towards the end of the game, but uh, considering this guy's strength <laughs> and the fact that I've lost him before, I will take that win any day of the week. So, I wonder why his... Hmm, I wonder if he's living in Bulgaria now. He's a Croatian grandmaster, as his name suggests, but um, I think his fiance is actually... Um, I think she's Bulgarian, so maybe he's living in Bulgaria at the moment. Um, anyways, let's go back and take a look. So, we played this line... This like double fianchetto line for black, and after d4, most people most people take on d4, and then white takes with the queen, and usually black plays d6 and then completes their queenside development prior to castling. Um, Knight e4 is a supposed to be a pretty solid line though, and I think I played it the right way, taking and then closing off his bishop, so sealing off its escape square to b7. And now, I've discussed this in other videos, but I want to get rid of his light score bishop so I can push e4, but I don't simply want to play a move like knight d2 because then he can trade, and that's a little accommodating to black if white is just offering to trade the light score bishop straight away. I'd rather attempt to keep my bishop pair on the board. So hence the idea of bishop h3. I'm trying to go knight d2 without allowing that trade. And he takes the opportunity just to take on f3. That's probably smart. I thought I held a, a nice advantage here, like small edge, just because of the bishop pair and the space advantage. He's very solid, though. Um, notice how he has a lot of pawns on light squares, so that restricts my light square bishop. He did a good job of keeping that piece out of the game for much of the play here. I played rook b1 just to free this guy, just so I don't have to worry about that. So here, I was kind of wondering what to do if, if he took, because if I take back and then he goes d6... I don't know that I'm super thrilled about my pawn structure, especially that isolated pawn on d5. And he has no real structural weaknesses aside from maybe the d6 pawn. So I was kind of debating the idea of taking on c7 should he do this, and then recapturing with the queen to try to exploit this backward pawn. But I don't know, if, if I have an edge here, it's minimal. And actually, I see now that he can put the bishop on d4, and that will disrupt any rook plus queen combo I have on the d-file that could pressure his d6 pawn. He may just plop that bishop there and um, destroy that that battery. So maybe this isn't so much for me. Let's just check with the engine. Yeah, so it says that position's roughly equal. So I have a feeling he should take on d5. He did this, and then I move my queen up. We got this position. It seems logical for him to close it down, since he does have uh, the knight versus my bishop, knight and bishop versus two bishops. But I think white just has much better play here. I have more obvious pawn breaks. You know, I mentioned this a4, a5 idea I can do on the queen side. And I see the computer does approve of queen a4. I was wondering about that, because I kind of wanted to go a4 right away, but I thought he might do a timely knight a6 to c5. And even though I could take his knight, then we're in an opposite color bishop scenario. I thought it might be better to um, try to restrict his knight first. And maybe work my way into the light squares if possible. I just did this, bishop d2, to make sure that f4 doesn't come with tempo. Um, 
I think a turning point was when I was able to get this maneuver of the light square bishop into maneuver the, of that bishop into the game via d3, c2, a4. That helped my position significantly. Actually, here, since his queen's on d7, I kind of wonder if f4 is not a bad idea. And the plan is if he pushes e4 to further attempt to restrict this bishop, he loses the e4 pawn. So I can just take, and he's pinned. So I was thinking about various times I could play f4 myself, but I was always just assuming he would play e4. But I would bet that in this position, it's probably a decent idea to play f4. Yeah. And he can't, he can't push, so he'll have to allow me to take. Okay, so that was maybe a missed opportunity. Still, though, I like the way this ended up. Yeah, and at this point, nice position for me. It says he should strike back with b5. He chose to just get everything off the light score diagonal. Oh, I could have taken that pawn on d6. Didn't see that. I just played the automatic bishop c6. Yeah, and here I wanted to take on a7, but I was trying to calculate the consequences of this. This knight takes d5 move, discovered attack on my queen. And I thought I might be able to win this pawn afterwards. I don't know, so say something like, because if I go queen a6, he could actually go rook a7. Although, I guess I do escape there. But somehow it felt better to not capture on a7 right away. Oh, and bishop g5 would win the exchange. Okay. Again, not a move I considered. I was focused on the queen side. I didn't think about trying to skewer his two rooks. Hmm. So I played bishop b4 instead, but then he got 98 in. Still, though, very tough position for black to play. So this rook pawn uh, move is, is thematic for a structure like this. Pawns on a7 and b6. So I'm just trying to weaken him. I'm trying to get at b6 and create a weakness. If I could get him to take me, that would open the b-file. His a-pawn would become isolated. I just had to be careful when I played a4 because um, if I were to do it at the wrong time, maybe his knight could jump back to c7 and my queen would be lacking squares to retreat to. So, very tough position for him already. It just took the time, though. He was up a bit of time. So I ended up winning a pawn here, right? Uh huh, c5 was good, apparently. c5... Pawn takes pawn, rook takes e5. Was another way to play this, according to the engine. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, I just took on b6 just for simplicity's sake, but I'm not surprised that um, deferring the capture in favor of something else is possibly even better, because he is pinned. That knight is not going anywhere with the rook behind it on c7. So now I'm up a pawn, good position. And the rest was pretty much a time scramble. Brought his king to f6, so I tried to <laughs> go and annoy him a little bit. I totally forgot, by the way, that um, when I played queen a5 and he took, that I could just take his queen. <laughs> when I when I played rook a6, I anticipated that I would be pinning him, but when he took, I just like instantly took the rook instead of the queen. Very foolish. <laughs> okay, and then ended up flagging him somehow. Check. Actually, checkmating him in the time scramble. Okay. Yeah, and there's some evaluation swings at the end. Like I see that uh, this allowed bishop d4 check. Check. Would have been a good move. And then he can take my pawn next because if I take here, he has queen e1. Check. And he's winning. But can't analyze this seriously when we're both at like under five seconds. So, all right, cool game. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. And what's my three-minute rating up to after this one? It's around 24.40, maybe? 24.38. Okay, so I'm climbing the three-minute ladder. All right, I'll be back with a couple more videos today, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.